one today we are um, filming at my desk because uh, I had a question that usually pops up in class and blood banking and I kind of just wanted to get it out there um, picture wise uh, so we don't really need to be in the lab today so what I want to talk about are the phases of testing in the blood bank okay so we have three phases we have the immediate spin we have the 37 and the AHG Okay, and um, when people will usually describe these different phases, they think about the characteristics of the antibodies um, that might be present um, and how we see them. So we're always looking for agglutination or hemolysis in any of these phases in order to find if there is a pot or in order to define a positive reaction. So let's talk about the immediate spin first, okay? If you ever talk to somebody, they would say that um, since this is at room temperature, uh, which is below body temperature, we're thinking of labeling any antibody that becomes present here as a cold antibody. And that's just in relative um, terms to body temperature, which is 37. Okay, so in this respect, uh, we kind of just go ahead and label those uh, IgM antibodies as cold antibodies. All right, so if we have something happening in the immediate spin um, for a possible cold antibody, uh, we want to think about this actual structure of the antibody. Okay, so if we're looking at an IgM antibody, it's much bigger than an IgG antibody, which just looks like one of these. Okay, so there's five um, sets of um, binding opportunities here on this one type of antibody. So if we had um, if we had an antibody to a patient's RBC antigen, if we just had one binding um, between these two entities, there's more chance of agglutination because of how big this guy is. Okay, so let's move um, forward to the 37 and talk about why we don't really see too much agglutination here. Okay, so again, um, 37 is body temperature. And since we're, uh, we know that the body temperature is higher than that of the surrounding um, air, we're looking at that as a cold, or sorry, <laughs> a warm antibody, and mainly we're looking at IgG. Okay, and just as I said earlier, IgG antibodies just look like that. Okay, so if there is sensitization of a patient's red cell um, in the 37 phase, it, it's just kind of like that. <laughs> and do you see how, what a huge difference this is here? With an IgM, we have so many different opportunities to have agglutination happening um, with all these different uh, red cells that it could come in contact with. But <laughs> if we have, you know, just the IgM antibody, sorry, IgG antibody, that's kind of what it looks like. There is less opportunity to see agglutination with this kind of um, antibody than there is for IgM. That's why, um, you know, you might see such a really huge reaction in immediate spin, but not so much in a 37, if any at all. Um, so we think of any type of antibody that shows up in um, 37, uh, or AHG to be clinically significant. So if we did have an IgM and it was present in the 37, that would be a clinically significant IgM antibody. Um, if it doesn't, then we're not really thinking it's clinically significant. It could just be something that's happening in vitro because of the temperature um, that we're looking at. So 28 degrees um, would be room temperature and we're thinking um, of body temperature as being 37. Okay, so then what happens? Well, um, you know, between each of these steps, uh, you know, we do have centrifugation and we look for agglutination because we're looking for this. Um, but when we are about to go into the AHG phase, let me move my camera 
when we're about to go into the AHG phase, we're doing something a little different, okay? Um, even though we may not see a large agglutination happening um, at the 37 uh, phase because, you know, these guys are so small, um, we may still have it there and not know it. So we want to, um, we're, we're going to have a wash step in there. Um, we've explained these different phases in another um, video in regard to what's happening, but we'll just rehash it a little bit here. So we're washing away any unbound antibody, so it goes away. All right, and then we're going to um, add the AHG reagent. And what is that? The AHG reagent is anti human globulin okay so all that is is an antibody to human antibodies <laughs> okay so um if this actually happened we would end up adding this uh other antibody you know um it would be igg here we would add this um to this tube to see if we can find it. So the reason that we're seeing, hold on. So the reason that we're seeing any agglutination here that we didn't see there was because this just seemed too small. So we're enhancing the reaction by adding more antibodies to make it so that those cells can come together. Okay, so in this respect, we're going from a situation where we have this to a situation where we now have um, more of an opportunity to see what's there. Okay, um, so we can then also bind to another IgG that bound to um, some antigens there. So then we're making our agglutination bigger. Before it was just okay, we had two cells that were kind of hanging out near each other because they were attached to the same um, IgG, whereas now we're adding more. So it, became, it becomes more of the size of this. And that's why you will see more of an agglutination in AHG and you may not in 37. You still have the same antibody there. You're still detecting the same antibody, but the AHG reagent is just an enhancement of this reaction to make it so that we can see it. Okay, um, if you are interested in seeing how any of the, this works, you know, you can look at all the other videos that I have posted um, and the testing that we've done. But I felt that this was necessary to describe um, because sometimes, you know, we know the information, but we just don't put it together because uh, we don't really think about it. And then, um, you know, I, I always get that question, why don't I see any agglutination here? macroscopically but I see it here and um, you know when we draw it out in pictures it helps to make it um, a little more understandable and to see the size difference is really huge too all right uh, I hope that was helpful thank you so much for watching and if you really appreciated this video please subscribe and like it um, that way uh, I know uh, what you all are looking for and comment away. That would be great too. Any suggestions, I would love to hear them. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.